Welcome back. I'm Sean Wildermuth. I've been taking a look at .NET 8 as the release is really impending now, working with some of my clients to upgrade their own projects, finding some new features that are really adding some niche opportunities to make our applications better. Before we get started, I just wanted to ask you, please like and subscribe. If you like the content I'm doing or even want to suggest content, go down below the like button and put it in the comments. I really try. I have a whole list of topics I'm covering, and I'd love to put your ideas in the mix as well. So today we're going to talk about exception handling in ASP.NET. Now, exception handling in ASP.NET has been possible, but you had to write your own middleware really to handle it correctly. And what Microsoft has introduced in .NET 8 is this ability to have an exception handler, a class that actually is made for this, that you can add into the pipeline. There is one little caveat about it that we'll talk about as we get into it, but let's take a look at some code. So I'm just going to create a new project. It's just going to be a simple ASP.NET Core Web API project. And I'm just going to call this fun with exception handling because I like things easy. We're going to use .NET 8 because this only exists in .NET 8. And I'm just going to turn off HTTPS because I don't care about it much. And I'm not going to use controllers or enable open API. I want a really clean project, in fact. And when I look at this, I have a really simple project. There's actually only one C Sharp file in here. And I'm going to even clean that up get rid of that and that because I don't want any of the weather forecast stuff to happen. I'm just going to say, just so the code is as clean as possible, map get. I'm just going to throw a new invalid operation exception. Good. Bad things happen to good developers, right? And because we're running in a development build, I'm not using any dependencies. I can just simply run this. Let's actually turn off launching the browser because we're going to do everything inside of Visual Studio. So if I run this, I can open up this HTTP file. We can see it's automatically configured a prefix for us. And I'm just going to say API foo, right? save that, send the request, and it's going to stop because we're in the debugger on the exception. But if we get past it or we weren't running in the debugger, what do we get? We get a 500 error, and it's giving us some information. And some of this is useful. Bad, thing, bad things happen to good developers. We're seeing all this information, but this may not be what you want. This may not be exactly what you want it to experience. And so we might want to handle that on our own instead of relying on the default here. And so if we come over here, I'm going to create a new class. Don't create this in your program.cs, but for this example, I'm going to do it rather quickly here, and I'm going to call it our exception handler. And I'm going to implement I exception handler. I'm going to bring in those diagnostics, and I'm also going to implement the interface. And all the interface does is pass you the ability to handle the exception. And then based on this return value, you can tell it whether you want to continue or just exit. Let you make the decision about whether you want to be the one who handles it and then it goes back to the user or whether you want to let it go through other middleware. And for ours, I'm actually going to just say return true, which means this is the end of the road. Let's make this async because we're going to want to actually work with this async. And what we're given is the HTTP context. And I can go to the request and write response. And I'm just going to write async some text. So I'm going to say exception thrown. Sorry, right? Not all that useful, but because it's async, I need to say await here. But I also could take that HTTP context.response, say status code equals, let's say 501. Not a valid status code, but we want to see what actually happens here. And we also want to say content 
type. And let's just say it's going to be text plain, right? So what this is trying to show you is that you can do what you want with this. It's giving you the exception. So in fact, let's make this even a little better. And let's just say exception dot message, right? We're going to throw the message in here, but we're going to return it in a different way. And then not an uncommon way to do this is actually to say write JSON async and include a problem return object. And that would format in certain ways that might be useful to get back out. But I want you to see how this works. I have the exception handler. And so the first thing we need to do is use our builder services add exception handler, which is a new API. And I'm just going to pass it our exception handler. Now you can override whether this is transient or whatever, but by default, it's going to be uh, only transient. So only going to be created when it's needed. And there's no state here, so that's perfectly fine. So now that we've added the exception handler, let's come down here and add the middleware. So we're going to say app dot use exception handler. This is an API we've had before. This is allows you to register some middleware or to point the exception handler at a known URL to have that page handled. But this exception handler is supposed to look for our exception handler that we created up here, right? Well, not quite. Let's restart this. And we're going to see almost immediately this error. Error configuring the exception handler middleware because it wants the exception handling path or the exception handler property to be set. And this empty constructor, because it was used before, doesn't do either of those things. It doesn't assume, oh, if this exists, therefore I must be able to do this. And this is a bug. It's actually been confirmed by Microsoft and probably won't make it into the release of .NET 8 just because it's so soon, it's a week and a half away but it will probably be in a service release soon after because having this throw an exception that isn't all that clear, that message we got about need to be sending the exception handler or whatever isn't obvious. And the way to get around that is actually to pass in a configuration Lambda. Now notice I'm using the underscore here because I'm not actually going to do anything with this. I could, I might want to, configure certain things about the exception handler. But in order to just use our exception handler here, we're actually going to just pass in a Lambda, use that overload instead. And hopefully either the empty exception handler or the docs will be better, or maybe even the exception be better based on us also using both of these in, in tandem. So if we restart this now, we'll see it doesn't throw that exception. And when we execute this, we're going to get that exception because we're running a debug. But if we run it again, we'll see we're getting that 501 exception that we created. We're saying the message here, and we could even be including the error message like we're doing here. And there's different ways to handle exceptions. You could be returning a problem result in the case of everything being an API. But remember, this exception handling isn't limited to APIs. This could also be used for what you want to do for any of the different APIs, whether you're using Razor Pages, whether you're using Blazor, whether you're using MVC, all of that would be supported here. Now, there is something to know. Remember, I said earlier that return true meant do this and stop it. Now, why would you want return false? Return false here would be, I want you to continue doing what you're doing. I just wanted to be notified about the exception. And so it wouldn't be surprising to do something like logger dot log error X, something like that, right? That would not surprise me. And because we're using exception handler now, we can actually use a constructor. And so if we ask for our logger, our exception handler, logger and let's go ahead and just prop that in then obviously i could be just logging this and returning false which means do everything i wanted to do i just wanted to know about it and then we can continue so the facility of using an exception handler here has some really key benefits to how it works us being allowed to create an exception handler that also uses its own services instead of having to cobble something together means the exception handling that you're writing in this 
does a few things. One, it has an interface so we know what we're expecting. It's enforcing that we're going to be dealing with tasks and asynchronicity, as well as supplying these common elements that have been kind of hard in middleware to get before. Had to pass in the HTTP contact accessor to get at the context, and also weeding through what is the real exception here. Was it the last one to run or whatever the case may be? So I find this handling of the exception by creating a handler much easier than it's been before. Again, if you've gotten this far, like and subscribe. That's about all I'm going to say about that. But thank you for watching these. If you have any ideas about .NET 8 content you want me to cover that you don't see other people covering, please let me know down beyond the like button in the comments. I'll see you next time for Coding Shorts. Yeah.